welcome to the car guys and this feature length holiday special featuring the greatest car that has ever and will ever have been built full stop no arguments this is the ferrari f40 for you for the holidays can't deny this is one of the most iconic car shapes in history. Ferrari absolutely nailed it with this anniversary car. Anyone recognises it, it is truly one of the most iconic car shapes that's ever been made. Just look at the shape of it, I mean obviously check out the, the sheer width, it's two metres wide for a start. You've got this enormous fixed wing, you've got ducts all over the place, you've got a NACA duct there, you've got ducting here, here, this Again, quite distinctive plastic clamshell on the back of the car, which is permanently open to allow venting from the engine. And boy, does this engine need a lot of venting. It's just one of the most stunning shapes that you can find. Also, interestingly, the F40 is indented here on the side, but only on this side of the car. They didn't even bother doing it on the other side. Why? Ask the Italians. Look at these polished rims, split rim speed lines, very distinctive, unique to this car, and then clothed in some of the largest tyres that you will see this side of a Lamborghini Countach. Twin fuel tanks, obviously one on each side, accessed via these flimsy little pieces here, which be very careful with those. Ducts from here down the side of the quarter light into the back of the engine, so get more airflow over the top of that engine to keep it nice and cool. More ducting in here, straight into the engine bay. This one, interestingly, goes out to route towards the rear of the wheels. The thing about this car that I love the most is the front end. If you look at it straight on, the, the, each wing slightly curves off to the side and it's just the most amazing shape. Now, the guy that designed this car as part of the Pinaferina design house, previously he'd done a 308, which is a much more curvy vehicle. And this one is very angular, it's very straight, which actually I think adds to it. F40 purists absolutely don't stop talking about is the seeing the weave through the paint. It's like a thing. The more weave it's got, the better the car is. That's rubbish. Do you know what it is? Less paint. You know what it's less paint? Friday afternoon, off down the pub. Okay, so we're now going to demonstrate how you open the rear clamshell, what we call it? Clamshell, good! Of an F40. It's a very tricky manoeuvre, it requires often two people. You can do it with one. It's best to do it with two though. Best with two because it bends and flexes quite a bit. So this is how you do it. First of all you unclip these two sections here, nice metal lockable clips. Then one of you, in this case me, gets hold of here and here and then you lift and then up to the knee. Push, push. Now, sometimes the clamshell will foul slightly against the air boxes, but don't worry about that horrible scraping noise. <laughs> of very expensive carbon. So you then lift it up like this. You can see it's quite a heavy unit. And then here is the majesty of the bendy two-piece stick, which you use. So you pull that out to its extension. You then push it down, give it a bit of rigidity, and then you locate it in this tiny little cup. Yes, it can be described as an afterthought when someone said how we're going to hold it up. Ta-da! Ta Here we are at the business end of the most amazing car in the entire world ever. This is the engine bay area and the, and the engine's actually pushed quite a long way far forward. So this is a just under three litre V8 with twin IHI water-cooled turbochargers. It produces 478 brake horsepower, about 7,000 RPM. It's very old school in that respect because the 
big turbos, it takes quite a long time to get it up there. It will propel the car to 60 miles an hour in just over four and a half seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot in today's modern standards where we've got cars doing it in three, but trust me, it feels a lot quicker than that. This car was produced as the 40th anniversary of Ferrari. So it's quite an iconic vehicle in that respect. Enzo Ferrari, it's the last car that he signed off. Well, this is probably one of the finest engines that Ferrari's created. It's certainly one of the most famous. It's only a V8, but at 2936cc, just under three just litre. Just under three litres. I mean, it's barely anything, is it? It doesn't sound much, but I think when you clamp two enormous <laughs> turbochargers to it, Well, I mean, just look at the size of the wastegate on this thing. It's even got its own special little, I think, is this like a trumpet? To <laughs> we could call enhance it Enhance the sound. We've got the heat exchangers here, two massive heat exchangers. Wow, I mean, look at it. This car's got uh, optional carbon air boxes on it, whereas um, I've still got the original that came with it. They're sort of like a dull gray color. But I'm loving, you know, the blue pipes for the fuel rails coming in here. It's just a lovely thing to come and look at and sort of poke around and go, oh, I wonder what that does, I wonder what that does. I'm not sure if this is standard exhaust. I don't think it is. Right. I actually think this is an optional exhaust on here. It makes it a little bit more fruity. F40s are prone to bursting into flames and, uh, oh yes. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> Randomly. And so to safeguard that, the previous owner very sensibly fitted this fire extinguisher system all through the engine. So the buttons in the front, if you, if you start to see some flames, and believe me, there's nothing more terrifying than seeing flames in the back of an F40. <laughs> But if you do, you press the button and this whole engine is uh, covered in foam. Don't push it accidentally. No. I have to say, I'm a little bit scared having my head underneath <laughs> these very guillotine-like <laughs> structures above us. You've got a very heavy uh, it is rear very, tailgate. It's really heavy as well. And, and it's held up by this, what can only be described as a garden rake. <laughs> <laughs> and it also... Wob wobbles, wobbles quite, quite a lot, lot. as well, which is, which is frankly terrifying. Actually getting this close and personal with the back does uh, kind of point out the incredibly poor build quality of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see bits of sort of composite material splattered all over the place. You've got sort of like a vague, a vague nod to heat absorption and trying to sort of reflect the heat outside. So you've got some silver I mean, the gaffer tape. Are, this, this looks like it was basically done with a hacksaw as an afterthought, because like it didn't close the first time. So they just kind of saw a bit more out of it and then didn't bother changing it. But like they did this for every one. There are cut marks that go past that bit, which means it was literally cut out. It sort of looks a little bit like Czechoslovakian NASA. <laughs> I think yes, that's, it does. I mean, this is a space program, but... Are you sure this is going to space? <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. But, I mean, what an engine, what a piece of theatre this is. You put the, the back up of this at a car show and there is a crowd yeah. instantly looking at it. I mean, what you have to remember is that this car is solely about this bit and the steering wheel. And that's kind of it. Beautiful body over the top of it really was a kind of afterthought. It was like, I suppose we'd better put something on it. Here we are at the front of the vehicle. Independent twin wishbone transverse oscillating suspension front and rear. We've got hydraulic shock absorbers. We've got vented discs all the way around, obviously. Rack and pinion steering, vents cooling the brakes so these connect to other vents down at the uh, down the bottom here which you, which you can see we've got more excellent Italian build quality up here which is lovely here what we've done is we've sprayed we've sprayed this with some kind of rubber thing to stop it from getting wet because otherwise the headlights don't work fire suppression tank at the front charged it's in the green I have checked it this is how you put down the front of an F40 so you gently you've got a lot of weight there so you gently bring it down it's got metal pins here which locate into the top piece with a slight rubber and a spring and then that bounces what you do is once you get it in position you then push that down and it's locked in position here we are inside the cockpit. As you can see, this car's got the optional racing bucket seats, the real originals, with the four-point racing harnesses for added coolness. It makes it really feel like you're in a racing car. You've got exposed welds everywhere, this sort of like green, incredible Hulk blood type material scattered randomly all over the cockpit. Uh, this one's actually got 
mats in it which is fairly unusual as you move through onto the dashboard itself this is where you keep all the fuses in the center here you've got what must be the most useless dolly mixture-esque controls for the heating system and aircon they have absolutely no feel you never know if they're on or off or if they're working properly and very rarely do you get anything meaningful coming out of these vents Right in the centre we have oil temperature and oil level and also the fuel gauge, very important in an F40 with its twin fuel tanks. Right in front of me, classic, epic, one of the greatest views forward of any road car, let alone a Ferrari. This is an iconic set of dials. So we've got uh, water temperature, we've got the turbo pressure gauge and then speedometer and tachometer. Either side of the gauges, we've got two slow down lights, which until recently I never knew were even there. They come on when the engine is over fueled or if it gets too hot or if it just wants you to slow down because something very impendingly bad is gonna happen. Proper racing steering wheel at exactly the right angle and the same angle as a go-kart. You've got fairly flimsy stalks for the windscreen wipers and the lights and indicators. They don't feel very substantial at all. It always feels like you're gonna snap them off. They probably cost 80 gazillion pounds each. And then down here on the left, we've got the aftermarket fire extinguisher button. Press at your peril. Never let kids into an F40 because that's the first button they're gonna press. And we've got fog lights. We've got heated front screen, would you believe, on a Ferrari F40? And then here we have the ignition key. It's probably the most underwhelming, disappointing Ferrari key that you'll ever find. And a large rubber button, which looks like it was about 14p to start the car itself. This car came with a optional gear knob from the Ferrari F50, um, which I've decided not to fit because I much prefer the old classic one. We've got classic gated five speed transmission, handbrake, area for putting knickknacks and things here and that's pretty much it not forgetting of course those lovely drilled pedals absolutely epic view through the rear window is of the plexiglass vents and the cross beam and not much else you get a bit of the rear wing uh, but if you're hoping to spot anything behind you good luck just look at that though, look, a proper Italian leather service book where you keep all your documents. You don't get these anymore. It's a real shame because this thing is a work of art. And this pristine example of an F40, one of the best I've ever seen, is also Ferrari Classic A certified, which means you get a big box full of photographs and documentation relating to the originality of the car, proving that it is all original. So one of the other problems of F40s is that unfortunately cats can get into the engine bay and, and they're a bugger to get out. Woo. Oh God, I love this car. I love this car so much. I love four point harnesses. I just think they're so cool. They are cool. Even though they're a bit of a pain in the ass to put on, Look at that. Oh, I just feel like a man, don't you? Racing driver. This bit is supposed to be across your crutch. What? That it is. It's supposed to be holding your base, not your big fat belly. Oh, is it? <laughs> we've been waiting to do this for so long. Oh. And now we've nearly got 20,000 subscribers. Nearly. Then this well, is the time. This is the time. Okay, so key in, turn it on. Then we push this big button. Dolly mixture, would we call that? Yeah black rib nobbler with the uh, with the very handy start label <laughs> stuck on yes the not stuck on by me no what i love though i mean look you've got carbon fiber door sills so you've got no substantial door here you've just got carbon fiber you've got carbon fiber tub really thick all around us yeah look at the welds i have to say the trim around the center console and around the top of the binnacle alcantara it's really very nice. So we've got manual windows. What? Proper old school. Manual? Nothing electric in here. Can you go and find me someone to open the windows for me? <laughs> Frankly, I don't do that anymore. You've got a piece of, of cable for the door pull to open the door. Just a That's bit of cable. Though, isn't it? Yeah, proper okay. race. Is there any car that makes you feel more like you're in a race car except a race car? Is there, more, is there a car that makes me nearly wee my pants every single time I get in it more than this car? No, no, no there's not. No, there is not. How's the headroom? For me, it's all right. I mean, I can just feel the top of my... There's actually long... indents in there. Yeah, of course. Didn't realize that. There's indents. Yeah, crash helmet. Yeah, in the roof. So actually tall people can fit in this car just about ish. 
What's that noise? Fuel pump. Fuel pump. Prime the fuel pump. Prime it. V8, 478 brake horsepower. So first thing you notice, dog leg first on the gearbox. Dog leg first. Very unusual, used to be uh, something that people did in the olden days. To me, just adds loads of character to the car. Obviously, if you forget what you're doing, then you accidentally put it in reverse to start and go straight, straight back into something, like we did at the service centre when it was left in reverse in the service centre. Oh my God! Good job I checked that one, eh? As with the GT3 Touring, it's quite a loud car, so you're definitely going to have to shout. It is a very loud car, but it's supposed to be a loud car. They went. Do we need sound in? Then someone went. No. 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 Is that French? That could be French. Right? It's very bouncy, but in a kind of. It's quite compliant. It's not a solid hard ride. Yeah, it's not Lamborghini hard. It's not Lamborghini hard. For me, the closest thing I can come to is a go kart. This is like a big, long wheelbase go kart. Very wide. Yeah. The rake of the steering wheel is identical to go kart. The feel of the steering wheel, i.e. the amount of weight and the sort of actual feedback it gives you, just like a go kart. That's a really interesting thing, actually. That when when it's stationary, moving those front wheels is really hard. I mean, well, have you seen the size of them? Properly tough. The size of them, though. But as soon as you put on any speed at all, even sort of five miles an hour, it lightens up. It instantly up. becomes light. Yeah. And very easy to use. But it is a wide car, isn't it? two meters wide just under a fraction under two meters and you do notice that driving through little towns villages. <laughs> yes, little villages i think we might need some air conditioning on the front windscreen tell me the tactile feel of those buttons you are using here well, what I like, try and describe it what i quite like is that the, the back plates which indicate what the button does actually move at the same rate as when you turn the button itself so you're never quite sure if what you've done is turned the entire switch or the actual button. Once you get used to the sheer size of the thing and the width, it does actually shrink around you and, and it's actually, you, you forget about the size after about 10 minutes. I can see pretty much nothing through the rear view mirror. But it's a, it's a hypercar, it's not supposed to be good. That's true, who cares about what's behind us? Exactly. Wasn't that a classic Enzo quote? <laughs> Who gives a shit about the people behind you? Something like that. Something like I'm that. paraphrasing. Yeah. And then it does that. Out of nowhere. It's just those turbochargers. It's just those, those turbochargers are, should be made illegal. You can just hear this vague little it's whistling. The whistle, it's the whistle. Just go. You go, oh, what's the, uh, yeah. is that, something's whistling behind us, and then, light speed. Whoosh. Yeah. You just have time to go, is that is a that whistle ah! sound? <laughs> and away you go. The F40 is all or nothing. You put your foot down, you've got time to knit a, a reasonable sized jumper, yeah. and then all of a sudden that's it. It just goes. Oh. I mean, it's shockingly quick, this car. That's, that's the thing about it is, it is an intimidating thing to drive because it is bouncing and it is finding grip and moving around all over the road. And it is shockingly fast. I mean, it follows every little undulation or camber yeah. that we've got. I have no choice. No. I just have to hold on. The Ferrari F40 seems to just gulp speed. It's it's just yeah, yeah. savage bursts of speed interspersed with a, with a sort of it's, slightly it's... difficult gear change and then wham, you're on again. Yeah. It's a very intense car to drive. But it depends whether your idea of fun is white knuckles and sweat <laughs> and blurred vision and a very, very elevated heart rate. If yeah. that's your idea of fun, if you yeah, like being is. scared. 
miles than the F40 is for you. A GT3 Touring would probably be quicker than this down this bit of road. Oh yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. And you'd probably get out the other end shrugging your shoulders and going, that was pretty cool. <laughs> this you'd probably go half the pace you get out the other end kissing the ground like the Pope <laughs> going thank the Lord I've survived <laughs> the TDF is actually less likely to want to kill you than this with a TDF yeah you've yeah. got a chance of catching the slides but this this steering wheel will not help you the, no. the brakes they've got all the feel and sophistication of a breeze block there's so much feedback through this steering wheel you can feel every little Indulation and, yeah. and hole and small mammal through this steering wheel is it is incredible. Well, when you go over a manhole cover, you can tell what town it's from. <laughs> Lewisham, Richmond, made in Telford. Obviously, it's left hand drive only the F40, so you've got that to contend with yeah. in the UK. Also, the speedometer is in kilometers, so I never have any idea what speed I'm doing. Some officer, but this comes from an age where the steering wheel is, is just a thing that turns the car, it doesn't have suspension settings or any other controls on it apart from, like apart from a horn. It has no airbag. What I love about it is that it's so pure, all the senses, everything yeah. is visceral, but the vision of just lightweight, super power, everything connected to the road, uninhibited with electronics and things. It's just a proper, I think the word old school and F40 go together perfectly. Third gear now. Are we? We're doing some miles an hour, not quite sure what. So let's see what happens when we push it. Go for it. Whistle. Wait, wait, whistle. There it is. <laughs> And then, oh, heave on the brakes! Oh, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it! Oh, stop, stop, stop! Oh. I love that pause! The pause gives you time to get your affairs in order. That's what it does. <laughs> right the wheel. So weak points of an F40. Whoa, 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 stop. Stop, 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 stop. No, that, that is not this, we don't, we're not doing that on this We're video. not doing this, no. This car There is, are no weak points on this car. car. How dare you? He's perfect in every way. I'll give you one, go on, you can have one. The heating system in this car is like having an old grandmother gently breaking wind in your face. <laughs> Oh, honestly, I, I agree with you. I don't. I don't think there's any real weak points. I can't. I can't see. You know, I moan about the build quality, but actually, that adds a little bit of well, but not, to it. Nothing's fallen off. No. I mean, it hasn't broken. At least 30 odd years old, and it's not. Yeah. All the switch gear is still in place. 1990. This car was made. 1990. Ridiculous. To find fault with an F40 is to find fault your entire life when one is tired of an f40 one is tired of one life tired of life it's a shame that they, they are co they cost so much money because you could do a roaring trade i mean i know people go to hypnotherapy they go to counseling services but really half an hour in this and you're yeah. the happiest person in the world <laughs> two meters wide four and a half meters long but crucially only one meter high <laughs> so is that why my back hurts every time i get out of this yeah. car that's okay. why getting out of this car basically involves men of our age opening the door and getting on our hands and crawling out. <laughs> so 0 to 60, if that is a measure for this car, 4.5 seconds, which if you think about it, the Carrera T was 4.5 seconds and we were slagging that off for being slow. Yeah, but what you have to remember is there's one and a half seconds of pause <laughs> as the turbos come on. <laughs> That's what you get with twin turbos, isn't it? Oh. Twin IHI turbos. God, this car is so good. Oh, it's just a, it's a real push, it's isn't a it? Proper, proper shove. It's just shy of 500 horsepower, but we're running just shy of 450 pound foot of torque. Yeah, in a car that weighs only 1,100 kilograms. Yeah. Look, <laughs> fat forks, you and your bloody gunpowder. 
If I start crying, <laughs> they are tears of joy. I think this door is shut properly. Ah, that's got it. So everything about this car is hard work. The clutch is super tough. The gear change is very tough. You do feel very much like you're sitting at the front very very front of the car don't you and that's why it feels very go-kartish because you've obviously got this big big bit of car behind you which you can feel but you're right on the front as it turns in you can feel how close you are to those wheels at the front so nice straight bit of road yep. we're in third are we ready just ridiculous this this literally driving this car has ruined me everything else i drive i compare it to this that's the problem and once you do that once you drive one of these things there's no going back they say don't meet your heroes don't drive your heroes i had a poster of these things on my wall as a child it was this and a white Lamborghini Countach. Yeah, I definitely had that. It was a 120 litre fuel tank in this. Jesus, is it really? We're already down to a quarter of a tank. Was it full this morning? Yeah. Holy cow. To be fair though, the flames that were spitting out the back of it as I was following you earlier. I reckon a lot of that fuel probably doesn't get burnt inside the engine. No. A lot of it sloshes out the back. Sloshes out the back. But yeah. If you're ever behind an F40, it's not raining. No. Okay? <laughs> it's That's just unburnt fuel. <laughs> oh! It's also quite low. This car. There's no. There's no lifting kit on an F40. It's a bit of a yob. This car, isn't it? Yeah. Noise-wise. Unashamed yob. It knows what it is, and it doesn't care. Servicing costs aren't extortionate. A Lamborghini is far more. I've never really had any major bills on this. Nothing really has truly gone wrong. Fuel obviously costs, costs a bit, but because you don't tend to drive them that much, then that's not too bad either. Aren't they special tanks on yeah, this? So bladders. Bladders? Yeah. Right, okay. So they're deformable like, like you get in race cars, so that they can't split, basically. The downside is, is it's such cool Formula One tech that when you have to replace them every 10 years, it costs quite a lot. Wow. And by quite a lot, I'm talking about five figures. Oh. I think what people don't realize about the F40 is it is a lot more civilized to drive than you would think. Yeah. It delivers the power. Oh God, does it deliver the power. Oh, crazy. But if you're just driving round, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's not difficult at all. We're at 30 miles an hour in third gear. It's got so much torque, it doesn't... It's not yeah. moaning, it's not complaining, it's not stuttering. That's the benefit of the V8, It's quite happy. It? Yeah, brilliant. And you know then, you could sit in this third gear to about 160. <laughs> Should I tell the ladies and gentlemen at home the reason why I'm being particularly yes, good? Yes, tell the story. So a few years ago, when Damien first bought this car, I think you'd only had it a couple of weeks, I came to visit and we took it out for a little burn. This is before I knew what Jason was like. <laughs> yeah, this is when Damien thought I was a sensible driver and not a trigger-happy Essex lad. I was just reveling in the moment and Damien said, there's an overtake there if you want it. And so I took it, but I wasn't paying as much attention as I possibly should have been. I may now this is strictly conjecture i'm not sure this actually happened i may have put two wheels on the grass verge yes yes you did whilst overtaking a tractor <laughs> it's not one of my finest moments ladies and gentlemen i mean put it this way i was 
pulling straw out of the car for two weeks. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video guys, hope you enjoyed this feature length episode on the Ferrari F40. Please leave loads of comments, ding that notification bell for when we've got another video uploaded and we'll see you on the next one.